But Peter, listen, um, what are the, or is the particular event or experience that inspired you to do law or enter into the legal fraternity? Uh, I would like to say it was something morally high, yes. but it was probably because my dad put a lot of pressure on me and I was trying to think of a profession and it was from Sierra Leone, from West Africa. Mm one of the few professions that I probably could do yes. there was teaching. I didn't feel I was made to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And so a lawyer seemed to be have a bit of kudos to it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. And I've got Peter Herbert, OBE, um, Chair of Society of Black Lawyers and eminent, eloquent legal mind. Is that correct, Peter? I hope I'm eloquent. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I'm, what, I'm not sure I have a legal mind, but I've got one anyway. I've got well, one. well, Peter, yeah. well, ladies and gentlemen, when I first came to the UK in 1992, um, as I said in my opening, I remember meeting you at the Society of Black mm -hmm. Lawyers and uh, this was in Brixton there, mm -hmm. upstairs. Yes. That building yes, there. Yes. And uh, it was... Um, for me personally, I believe coming to the UK, and I think I tapped into some good sort of network, you know, mm -hmm. and then eventually later on with OBE, which, um, not OBE, sorry, OB, OBV, with Simon yes, Woolley's yes, Society, yes. Um, doing the Shadow MP scheme, and just really tapping into those networks, making sure that I didn't lose my focus as a Jamaican coming here, trying to keep mm -hmm. that link, and then linking in with one of the political parties back home, because I said, Many people sometimes come to the UK from mm -hmm. the Caribbean, whatever, they lose their way in a way by just getting caught up in the system. But I wanted to make sure that I kept myself mm -hmm. rooted, irrespective of my political affiliations or whatever. Um, but Peter, you spent a large portion of your career focusing on the human rights. And recently, there's been I mean, a talk of a place in the Human Rights Act with the British Bill of Rights. What are your thoughts about that? Because that is something which is in the news, uh, you know, this government actually wanting to, you know, that way. What's your thoughts on the world rights issue? Well, I think the rights issue is, is related to the Brexit issue mm. because they, in a sense they go hand in hand. Mm. You wouldn't have any discussion about Britain uh, coming out of the Human Convention on Human Rights unless mm. it was latched onto and tied up with the whole Brexit debate. Mm. And part of the reason that people supposedly voted for Brexit mm. was the issue of sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So they basically don't like uh, European judges mm -hmm. making laws that affect British people. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that international conventions, yeah. such as the Geneva Convention on Refugees, such as the Rights of a Child, um, such as the, the Charter of uh, Peoples and Human Rights, mm -hmm. international conventions do dictate mm -hmm. the legal context in which Britain operates and have done for over, over 100 yeah. years. So in, in actual fact the, fact, the fact of sovereignty is almost a false argument. It's almost like saying we will, we will decide our immigration policy here. Well, no, you won't. Yeah. It's decided by the economic necessities of multinationals. So what you're saying as well is that all of these different co conventions or whatever still hinges on. The, the, or, 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 the human, or the human rights somewhat sort of hinges on it to a certain extent. Yes, they, they, they do. And so matter what, whether it is the... European judges mm. saying this is what you shall do and say for instance the the uh, the framework directive mm. on equality yeah. which is what was used in the Supreme Court has direct effect mm. even if it doesn't have direct effect indirectly those judges even if there was just a UK Supreme Court will pick up the European mm. jurisprudence and look at it and have regard to it mm. and if the European jurisprudence says the move is to give, for instance, prisoners the right to vote, mm -hmm. then yes, the UK Supreme Court may say no, but the, the direction is towards giving prisoners the vote. Yeah. And as the direction has been internationally against the death penalty. Mm -hmm. So the, it is really unrealistic to say that even if there were not a European Court of Human Rights with Britain as a member, mm -hmm. we would not be affected by that jurisprudence. Of yeah. course we would because it's an international and a global world mm -hmm. where we are just one relatively small player. And getting days. smaller each day, is it? Absolutely, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah, now the, the whole thing now regarding, um, and, I, and I go back to the world of the, uh, the UK and especially with the, the rise 
in the shootings of young black men uh, in the USA, in the UK. But on the Stephen Lawrence, you mentioned a while ago that you drove through the same area, which is not far from here. Um, at the time, you wrote various papers on equality and diversity for the Judicial Studies Board, the Bar Council, as well as various papers for Metropolitan Police Service. Have these recommendations or your recommendations been impl implemented? Well, some of them, yes. Mm. I mean, it's undoubted that the, the tragic murder of Stephen Lawrence did lead to mm. a sea change yeah. in the recommendations which were implemented, and partly mm. because we managed to get over Eric Holder, who is the US Attorney General, yeah. and there were some negotiations and pressure put on the UK yeah. government yeah. by the US of all people. And, and so, yes, but I think a lot of people felt that, as they did in America, that race was yesterday's story. Mm. It's done. And we don't have to do anything more. The post-racial era. That's right, post-racial yeah. era. Mm. We've got an American present yeah. who's uh, of African descent. Mm. And therefore, what's your Everything problem? Everything is cool What's now? your problem? Yeah. You know, you look at the, the UK football team. Look at the way we socialise. Mm. But actually, if you look at the centres of power, there may well be 40-odd members of parliament who are African and Asian, mm. but they've been less effective than when there were four. That's very interesting you said that. And so it's not just yeah. a numbers game, it's mm. if you do get in the house, what do you do when you get in the house? Mm. Because unless you're there and you flex that power, for instance, there is no parliamentary black caucus. How can you have 42 mm. African and Asian people sitting in one place, day in, day out, and they have groups on Palestine, they have groups on Anglo-Chinese relations, Jewish relations, Anglo-Jewish, yeah. and they do not have a black caucus in the House of Commons? And you're telling me when Bernie Grant was there, um, Botang, Diana Butt, and who was the fourth Keith person? Vaz. Keith Vaz. They were more powerful, isn't it? Well, they were more influential. More, are more influential. Because for good or bad, yeah. they were, they showed uh, a Grant. greater degree of unity yeah. than the 42 or 43. And if you yeah. ask most people in the community how many black members of parliament are there, this, I don't know, about 10, mm. 20. People don't know. The reason they don't know because it's not, it's not been promoted, because their unity is not something that people mm. see. And therefore there's a, in a sense, that is the, high, the most powerful place in the land. Yes. One could argue, apart from possibly the capital that moves around the city mm. of London. Mm. We don't have access to that very much. Yes. But what we do have is access to Parliament and the House of Lords. And for me, it is an irony that at a, at a time, and there is a connection, mm -hmm. between the number of our people that are being killed on the streets and the lack of unity amongst people of colour in the House of Commons. Peter, that is so interesting because in light of the recent killings of uh, young black boys and everything like that, it, and, and also communities, the black pound and everything like that, I believe everything synchronised. I believe very strongly that leadership from the top is very crucial in a country like the UK. And how can these MPs work together? Because there's, there's some Caribbean or some Jamaican caucus or some, some there's some fringes there, but not the overwhelming united factor. Well, there has to be. I mean, it should be, you only have to go to the US mm. and well, I've been many times mm. and there is the National Bar Association, yes. African American Bar Association, um, which has its parallels in medicine, yes. in nursing, in housing, in health, they're all there. And they go and talk to every year, mm. <coughs> at least, the Parliament, the, the Congressional Black Caucus. Yes, yes. That is where Obama came from, the Congressional yes. Black Caucus. Yes. And Barbara Walters, I mean, you know, pe people like, like that, who are leaders in their community, mm. but they're actually seen <coughs> visible to provide that leadership and strength. And that, for me, is a major absence of political leadership that we have in this country. Peter, is it the same <coughs> reason why you have persons that want to report certain things or say certain things because they fear that their career will be thwarted? Is it, you talk about principle, integrity. So therefore, who cares about being a judge or whatever like that? Because what's the sense of selling your soul for the sake of a, a position? when you're integrity and you can't look yourself in the mirror. Is that what is happening as well? I think that's part of it. I mean, there, there are many indifferent personal reasons. Yeah. And I think the major political parties don't want to see black representation. Mm. You know, I, I don't think the conservative whips, mm. liberal uh, labor whips, 
would like to see a cross-party unity, unity amongst people of colour, but it's desperately needed. And I think one of the things that is lacking, people say there's a lack of black leadership. Well, you just have to, the first port of call is to look at the House of Lords and the House of Commons, and that is where mm. we are there, but we're almost invisible. What about the Lords? The same. Usually it's, it's the same, Morris. it's the same. You know, yeah. unless they collectively unify, mm. it is extremely hard to turn around and say to the rest of the community, you all get on and unify. Wow. So where's yours? I, wow. I think that is the, a responsibility of all our politicians, <laughs> yeah. elected leaders. Yeah. Labour Party, black sections, you know, those few in the Conservative mm. Party, I don't think there's any mm. black members of Parliament and the Liberal Democrats. Mm. Um, but even if there were, I think the answer would still be the same. Well, it's very crucial, and, and that's a very powerful, that's one of the a fundamental meat which has come out of this interview about the same thing which is going across all different sectors, business, legal, politics, is about that united force, that united element. Um, you know, <clears throat> Peter, I want to sort of um, wrap up on, on this particular point, you know, and I believe it also plays a fundamental role regarding one understanding one's history. You know, you're planning to, uh, rep I won't say repatriate, but go to mm. Africa, mm. right? And a move like that at this time, would you say then that, Peter, you are actually leaving at a crucial point where there's that need? Because guess what? We got our children. I mean, I got my son who is 10, who's just getting in the system. Um, got to, we see what is happening there, out there. Is it the right time to actually go? Was it Dr. King said that it was always the right <coughs> time to do right? <laughs> so I, I for, for personally, yes. um, it's probably long overdue. Right. I mean, my father came from Sierra Leone. Yes. I never lived there, although visited. Mm. And I worked with the UN in Tanzania for mm. several years and thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. And so going to live in Nairobi with all its problems, and Kenya mm. has some significant problems, but it, I think it dwarfs the UK, isn't it? it well, or the UK yes, is dwarfed or it, whatever. It, so, yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's a tragedy when anybody loses their life in any form of violence, mm. let alone political violence. Mm. And so, yeah, that is extremely sad. And I, I'm hoping and praying that the country comes through. Mm. But I think the potential in Africa is huge. Mm. And I'm a Pan-Africanist. Mm. I'm a member of the Pan-African Lawyers Union, which is based mm. in Arusha in Tanzania. Yes. And That's where you're going to play golf sometime, isn't That's it? That's it, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mentioned that golf, yes, yes. Yeah. And, you know, it, it has an energy and mm. a vibrancy and an ability c c to connect with here mm. because most African leaders were trained, educated, and their children are educated here in the US yes. and Europe. And, and so there is a, a very strong, actually, as I, as I learned, mm. still very strong connection between some good, mm. some not so good, mm. between uh, the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. Well, I said what I find interesting <coughs> is about, um, sometimes in Jamaica we run this joke about go back to Timbuktu, you know? And when you say go back to Timbuktu, it wasn't seen as a very positive thing. It's more mm. go back, where you come from? Timbuktu. Mm. <coughs> but actually Timbuktu, which was actually one of the founding areas of education. Mm. Mm. And it's like going back to Africa, as you said, it's actually, maybe the base need to be strongly united as well mm. as a potential is there in order to actually feed into the diaspora mm. and that link. So therefore, is it that there's that, inter that link which is there that needs to be forged more stronger? I, I think it does. I, I mean, all over the world, countries which have a strong community in the diaspora yes. or have a strong nation and national identity. And so we have a continent mm -hmm. with <clears throat> hundreds of different ethnic yeah. groups, but many nations. Mm -hmm extremely wealthy in terms of mineral resources, mm. um, providing and sending home $20 billion a year mm. in remittances. Yeah. So we in the diaspora are powerful, yeah. but we're far more powerful if we're linked to our countries of origin. And we can help them through in terms of trade, development, yes. tourism, social mobility, uh, and it doesn't have to be a negative. So yes. I, I think I would like to be one of those ambassadors yes. in a sense not just for East Africa, but for mm. the whole of Africa. Yeah. And if, if, I have the, if I'm fortunate enough, then to work with the civil society there mm. uh, to develop good governance 
and trade and industry and basically it for me it's actually an opportunity yes and uh, it i will not i'm still here yeah. will not be lost altogether because i will come back regularly yeah. to the uk or much better peter um you can actually invite us over there to interview you as to the developments there send, yes send for us because i hear that there's a wealth in africa there is, there, there, there is, yeah. I think Kenya has about 500 billionaires. Yes. So, yeah, there, there are. I haven't yes. met that many, but no, there is potential. Yes. I mean, there is grinding poverty mm. and great suffering, but yeah. there is also great wealth. And the, the, the trick is to try and level that playing field yes. so everybody is lifted up and not just the few. Yeah. Well, Peter, listen, it's great to have in this interview. And of course, this is part one, because we have to do a major one next time, okay. hear more. Um, but before you go, Peter, um, what would you say is uh, your thoughts in a brief on the, the way forward for young black boys within the community, um, this killing of one another, if anything? And I call it a spade a spade. Let's deal with it. I don't like when people juxtapose and say, well, this is happening in America, <clears throat> that's happening everywhere. Turkish community, have it. what's the deal with the black community? <clears throat> no, I think the, the answer lies within our community. Yeah. You cannot expect the government to save you if you don't save yourself. Yes. And no people will be able to be liberated from their worst mm. nightmares or fears or violence unless yeah. they free their, their own mind, as yes. Bob Marley said. Yeah. So I think it, the answer is within our community, and the responsibility has to be for on all of us, yes. myself included. Mm. We can all do more, and therefore you 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 cannot look outside yes. for the answers. The answers lie in each one of us. Okay, and thank you. And your mantra, your quote, and your last quote. What's your favourite mantra? Your favourite word? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I, 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 I think it's um, no peace, no justice. No peace, no justice. Because I that, think that is, is, Lee, is, is, Lee, is um, Lee Jasper behind you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a popular one. But, it, yeah. you know, it resonates. And, yes. and I mean, nothing was ever achieved without struggle. Yes. And there is a struggle yes. at the moment, as uh, Frederick Douglass said. So, so oh, no right. justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, thank you so much okay, for that. Thank you. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And thank my guest, Peter Herbert. OBE, uh, Chair of Society of Black Lawyers and Eminent Legal Mind. Uh, remember to subscribe to The Silburn Show on YouTube, uh, Instagram, and as well join us on our website which is www.silburntv.com and see you next time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show and uh, of course what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it, but important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So, as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you, I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much, see you next time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, how about the... I don't know where I am. One of those smiling faces. Always smiling, always smiling. Try to, try to, try to. Actually, I've never seen Peter. I know he wants to get angry sometime in court. For a judge face on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Peter Herbert OBE. I've just appeared on the Silborn Show. I'd like you to look and subscribe and like the Silborn Show on YouTube.